In this week's newscast, People Power moves sex offender Patrick Come Again to Perth. The fight against the shark hull policy continues with activists signing petitions. Plus, be firewise this winter. This is the Evening News with Ivan Lung and Daniel Staniskov. Good evening. Public rage towards WA's judicial system continues after another dangerous sex offender has been released. Patrick Come Again was moved to Perth after rural town residents threatened to take the matter into their own hands. James Richardson, a long-time justice campaigner for the victims of crime, joined me this week to discuss the issue. James Richardson, welcome to Evening News. Thank you very much for the opportunity. The release of dangerous sex offenders like Patrick Dennis come again has sparked public outrage and fear within the community. Do you understand their concerns? Of course I do. But the, the trouble with the public uh, getting uptight about this, they can't do anything. And those that should be able to do, do something about it seem powerless. Uh, following the outrage by the local community and threats against him, come again has now been moved to another location. Will this solve the issue? No, the, the, the potential uh, problem is still there. It's not going to change it. He, he's too, too died in the wall as a, a repeat sex offender. What's the alternative of moving him? Well, these sort of offenders need to be kept under control in, in a prison. Uh, after the roll of the new GPS tracking device, it looks like that more and more dangerous sex offenders uh, like Come Again and TJD will be out again. Uh, what's your view on that? Well, I mean to say there are very, very wily p uh, people um, to be able to do what they've done so many times. They'll get, work their way around it somehow. The police minister said the government is against the decision and believe the offenders should remain in prison. Has the government done enough? Because under the separation of powers, they cannot directly um, interview with judiciary. Well, I understand that, uh, but that's the excuse that's given every time I complain about these these sentences. Uh, but the uh, the community is still uh, at risk. And finally, you have founded Justice First six years ago to help victims of crime after your son was killed with a one-punch attack. What's the aim of your group? Well, the aim is to try and prevent any more victims. That's, that's plainly what, what our, our main aim is. You know, we don't want any more. And the number of one-punch uh, attacks that have happened since my son, was, there's been hundreds. And they still continue. You know, nothing has been put in place to make a penalty severe enough to make people w wake up. James Richardson, thanks for your time. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. The fight is not over. That's the message from the anti shark hull activists as they urge West Australians to express their stance by signing petitions to the EPA. Senior journalist Chips Way reports. Over 18,000 people have signed a petition to stop Western Australia's shark hull, but despite immense pressure from the public, the WA government is showing no sign of letting up. Earlier, hundreds of the world's top marine scientists have called on the Western Australian government to abandon its shark call policy. Currently, the state's Environmental Protection Agency is evaluating a proposed three-year extension of the program. We had record-breaking 23,000 submissions in the previous um, submission period, so we are aiming to get something similar again this time. According to Sea Shepherd Australia, there is no evidence to suggest that drumlines will improve ocean safety and no evidence to prove that shark incidents have a negative impact on ocean use or on the state's business economy. I am hoping that the Environmental Protection Authority and of course Greg Hunt will step in and make either some additional conditions to what we saw in the trial period or will stop the drum lines from being put in place and alternatives um, considered instead. Although the government looks set to continue its shark culling policy, activists say the fight is not over. Shipsway, WMN News. If you think your home is safer from fire hazards this winter, think again. More than 100 homes were damaged or destroyed by fires this winter season, and the government is urging you to do your part to safeguard your home. Kerif Taplin has more. Despite cooler weather and winter, nine people were injured and 162 homes were damaged or destroyed, resulting in $3.7 million in damages last year. Emergency Services Minister Joe Francis said most house fires are accidental and can be prevented. The results can be catastrophic. Uh, we want to remind every single uh, person uh, that it is uh, dangerous to leave fires, heaters unattended. 
Most home fires were caused by carelessness, such as leaving cooking unattended on stoves, candles left burning, flammable items being placed near the open flames, or laundry left to dry too close to heaters. Andrew Duxworth from DFES also stressed the importance of smoke alarms. We just ask people also to make sure they're maintained and don't get tempted and take a battery out of your smoke alarm for your kid's toy or, or for uh, your transistor radio or something like that. Make sure there's a battery in that smoke alarm. Kira Tuplin, WAMN News. Western Australian road users will face heavier fines with the government's decision to raise penalties. Fines for using a mobile phone while driving will increase to $400. Speeding fines below 9 kilometres per hour will increase to $100. The demerit point deduction system will also be revamped. Police Minister Lisa Harvey believes the changes will discourage unsafe driving behaviour. But the opposition said the hike will rake in revenue worth millions of dollars for the government. A new statewide health campaign begins this week aimed at the consequences alcohol consumption has on the human body. About one in four West Australians are drinking at risky levels. Long-term alcohol consumption can lead to stroke, liver, heart disease and cancer. Health Minister Kim Hames and Mental Health Minister Helen Morton hope these campaigns can encourage people to think before they drink. To international news. There were major protests in Hong Kong during its unification Memorial Day with China. Meanwhile, Canada celebrates its national day with pride and joy. Here's Ali Harper with a summary of this week's world news. In Hong Kong, over 510,000 protesters attended July's first protest breaking the previous record that police say was only 98,600. The White Book, issued by the Chinese government in mid-June, had been a fuse for the record-breaking attendance of the rally. They also demanded the government retreat to the controversial New Territories Development Plan. Meanwhile, Canadians were proud of their country and showed their admiration on Canada Day. In Calgary, a living flag was formed by thousands of proud citizens in the afternoon, while a beautiful 12-minute long fireworks display in the late evening marked the end of the day. Ali Harper, WAMN News. And here's Kylie Samata with this week's top stories in science. Thanks, Ivan and Danielle. Two moratoria have been signed to increase protection of dugongs and turtles along the Great Barrier Reef. An agreement was reached with the Wapa Burra people who signed on for a decade-long moratorium on dugong hunting and the Yirrigandi people in Cairns signed up for an agreement which allows limited hunting of turtles and dugongs. Another Indigenous group has also agreed to work closely with the Yaraba community to establish a no-take zone for turtles and dugongs. All groups have been applauded for their efforts to advance the moratoria. The results of a WA-led study bring good news for dairy lovers. According to the study, consuming higher compared to lower amounts of full-fat dairy products, such as milk, cheese and butter, does not increase a person's chance of dying from cardiovascular disease, cancer or any other cause. The review's lead author, Teresa Sullivan, said there are good fats in dairy such as omega-3s and fermented dairies like yogurt may also contain beneficial bacteria. The review collected data from more than 1.8 million participants and was published in the American Journal of Public Health. A tridich has been sighted in the Albany region for the first time in more than 15 years. The elusive marsupial was spotted by a Department of Parks and Wildlife officer at Two People's Bay. Environmental Minister Albert Jacobs said it is an exciting discovery and the good news is that Chudich numbers have been increasing in response to the successful Western Shield Fox Control Program. The Minister has urged people in the region to contact Department of Parks and Wildlife with any reports or images of the Chudich. And that's science. Thanks Carly and that's the program for the week. For the latest news, please hop onto our website. Thanks for watching, we'll see you again next Sunday. Good night. Good night.